G'day there. You're watching the Aussie Beam Guru, and today we've reached lesson five of my Learn Dynamo series. And today we're going to be focusing on design script and code blocks. So you may recall in previous lessons, we've already figured out how to create lists and work with a bunch of common data types, and we've went through an introduction of how to use Dynamo. But this one, we're going to look at a special technique that might make your coding more efficient. Um, so design script and code blocks. Um, I know I promised that there'd be no coding um, in these uh, tutorials, but I did lie a tiny bit. We're just going to show you some simple ones um, that will you'll find very useful and that will improve the quality of how you build Dynamo scripts without requiring too much knowledge of coding itself. So we're not going to do anything like this. We're not going to create any complex forms using really wacky formulas. Um, we're going to use some everyday uses of code blocks that I use all the time. And then in the next lesson, we'll go back to 95% noting um, with a little bit of code block uh, knowledge that we've got from this tutorial that will save some time and efficiency. So code blocks essentially look a bit like this. Um, so you can see two in action in this script. Um, we've taken a point by coordinates um, and that's, that's using a design script within a code block. You can see that we've used a node on this top path. However, on the bottom path, we've used a code block instead with a design script function in it instead. So they're sort of like a shorthand in Dynamo um, and they, they allow you to use design script. And design script is basically these components highlighted here, um, which is the native coding language of Dynamo. Um, see them like functions, I guess, um, and they're, they're under the hood of most of the nodes. So even though you can't see them in many of these functions, um, really what's happening under here is something a little bit like that. So just be aware of them. And I guess uh, code block and design script whilst it's native to Dynamo, um, there's obviously some good, bad, and ugly. Um, the good is that it makes your scripts more efficient. It saves time and it saves space. Um, and it can also mean your scripts will run faster as well. Um, and it will guide you uh, as well to some degree whilst you write design script, there is a prompting of functions, which I'll show you. The bad is that obviously it takes time and experience to learn and it can rely a lot on syntax. So how things are written can be very important to design scripting. And the ugly is this sort of stuff. Um, which really separates you know, the boys from the men. This is the point where a lot of people will either give up on Dynamo or they will say, this is good enough for me. I can do what I need with nodes. I don't want to learn this. My, my recommendation is just follow what I show you today. And if you want to go further, go further. Uh, there is a steep learning curve with this sort of design scripting because obviously it relies on a lot of functions that you may not know the names of uh, by default. Um, and obviously as Revit changes, uh, design script can sometimes be changed as well. So for example, some of these functions have actually changed names between versions of Revit. Um, they may have been because the Revit's been working on the API in the background and needed to change the names of functions. But the problem with this is that it won't update these in your design scripts. You'll need to go back and actually fix your scripts in new versions of Dynamo sometimes. Um, the syntax of a design script is a little bit like this in principle. Uh, it's a little bit like Python in that you have a thing such as an element or a category and then you have a method that you apply to it separated by a dot. And then you have inputs that are typically in brackets after that. And that will imply an output on the end. Um, but we'll go straight to Dynamo and actually just show some examples of code blocks and design scripting. So we'll just start with a really simple fundamental code blocks. Um, to create a code block, you can either search for code block, or you can also just double click and that will start a code block, which you can type in. So code blocks are a bit special. So you recall in previous tutorials, we use numbers, strings, booleans as inputs. However, code blocks are all the same. Um, what really matters is how you write what's in them. So for example, if I write the number two, uh, the code block knows that I'm dealing with a number. However, if I put something in apostrophes, it knows that I'm implying a string. Um, so the data type is very heavily reliant on the syntax of how you write. And if I write true and false, the code block actually knows that true and false are special. Um, they are words that trigger the implied Boolean of true or false. Um, and you can see if I feed any of these in here, obviously I'll get respective outputs that suit the data type that I'm feeding in. So you can see just that this is a much more flexible way of getting some inputs. Um, I find that I almost never use numbers or strings anymore. I usually just use a code block instead because it's faster. And the really good thing about code blocks is you can combine things in code blocks using a semicolon. Um, with the apostrophe at the bottom. And that basically gives you rows of data in one movable portion. So this can be really fundamental for lightening up the size of your coding environment because you can set up a whole bunch of inputs at the start of your script. Um, so these are obviously implied statements. Um, you can also have implied statements with a formula. So I can just say X is five and my output will be five. 
So it doesn't really matter if you call out a variable and imply that it equals something because it will just give you the output. If I go two plus two, obviously it does the arithmetic for me. So certain symbols such as plus, minus, multiply are also present in code block, code block format. So obviously I can do divide and I'll get one. Um, so you'll see that that's quite, that's quite important to understand that these are much more simple to call on now. So instead of having to do divide with, a, with an actual node block, um, you can see I've just saved a lot of room there by doing that. Um, so it's important to understand statements as well. So statements would typically be something such as a, a, a variable plus a number, so x plus five. And you see what happens is that we don't only just get an output, we get a null currently because what's happened is we've created the variable. So we've implied x, so x needs to be something. So let's create a code block and make this five feed in five, and I can see I've got five plus five is 10. Um, we could also feed in lists of numbers as well. So to create a list, um, you just use square brackets. We'll touch on this shortly as well, and you can create more than one element. And you'll see that now my lists are being acted on as well by the function. So you can just see the room and the efficiency I'm saving by using this type of syntax. Obviously you can have more than one variable implied. So we could say one plus two, feed those in and we get three. Be mindful, you can actually use these multiple times. So I can use one twice to get two there, for example. So you don't have to make one row for every single input that you want. You can use one input multiple times if, if it makes sense. Um, from there, there's obviously a lot of combinators you can use. Note that if we call out X and Y multiple times in a code block, um, we don't actually have to worry about specifying X and Y more than once each even though we can get multiple rows of outputs. So obviously these outputs all represent respective formulas. So I can take those and get the results respectively. And you'll see that all I have to do is specify X and Y once. So a really powerful way to get multiple functions in one really small space. And obviously you can get Booleans as well. So I can take five and feed that in and I can watch my outcome. And these all imply I guess a, a Boolean check. So is it equal to five? So notice it has to be equals equals because if I had one equal sign, it would imply that X is five. If you put a, a, an exclamation mark equals, it checks if it's not, not five. So for example, if it was three, it's true. Um, we also have greater than and less than and greater than or equal and less than or equal as well. So just be mindful these are present and these will give you Booleans on the other side. So these can save you space as well. Um, so what, what, what you get to now is sort of what we look at, which is design script. Um, so design script is quite complicated. So while I'm typing in a note block, I can actually start typing out a function and you'll see as I type, I get options for design scripts to call on. So I can say point and I need to put a dot and you'll see, I have all these options now. So I could do uh, point by coordinates. And from there, it's going to expect a bracket. And you'll see that as soon as I put a bracket, it will start asking me, what do I want? So you can say one of two, two of two. So it has various inputs that it allows. You'll see that you can do X and Y, or you can do X, Y, Z. Um, so I could do X, Y, Z, close bracket. And essentially, at the moment, I'm getting nothing because I have no values. If I, because I'm running in automatic mode currently. But also if I did that, I would end up with a point of X, Y, Z. So you can see that we can, we can write code in different ways. But let's say I didn't know any of that. Um, it might be a more complex function. So what you have in Dynamo is a function called node to code. So if I highlight a bunch of nodes and I right click in the white space, you'll find this tool called node to code and it will convert my, my code into the format that it needs to be. So I can literally go and replace these with variables and we don't really need it to be equal to point one. We can just imply that point one is the output. And you'll see that now I've got what I just built. Um, so without any knowledge of how to do design script, you can actually go and interrogate nodes that you want to learn more about. So that's really helpful. Um, let's say we want to learn about how ranges work in design script. So I've got one through to 10 with a step of one. How does this work in node to code? So you'll see ranges are implied by two dots separating each respective input. So I have one through to 10 with a space of one. I could also take that out obviously as well. And what it will give me is the list of the range as we would get with the range node. And you'll see that ranges are very small now to write. They're very easy to write compared to before. I can obviously replace these with variables as well. I can say one through to X with a space of one. And let's say X is 20. 
and you'll see that now it sources that value. And if this updates, obviously my range also updates as well. So it's so quite a powerful way of writing out there. And you can also even have formulas, x tag five is my maximum. And you can contain that formula in there. And now you see that we'll end up with 20 as our limit because we've taken five from 25 within the code block. So we're saving a lot of space by doing this. Sequences are similar. So if I node to code this here, instead all you need to do is put a hashtag on the, the upper value instead, or the, or the number of values, sorry, the first number of values and space. And you'll see instead we get that, that respective output as well. We can look at more complex functions, such as ranges, getting items at indexes and transposing. So what we could do is we know how a range works, but what happens if we include another function in node to code? So we wanna get the fifth index node to code. So we end up with multiple lines of output there. So our first line is giving us our range. Our second line is referring to T4 and it's using what's called DynamoScript core. So these are basically the core functions. Um, I think it's in version 1.3 or two. They actually had to add these to the front of a majority of these functions um, when they expanded the API capabilities of Revit. So you may not have to do this in older versions, but this is an example of where they may change things that change how your script works. And you'll see there that obviously one to 10.1, my fifth index will be six. And you'll see that's my output as a result and I can transpose it to six. Um, but let's say instead we want to just take a whole bunch of nodes, a lot of them, node to code. And you can see it still managed to do it. So it usually will manage to do node to code quite easily. Um, if you have custom nodes, it typically can't do those with node to code. Um, but otherwise you can see this is a great way to learn how Dynamo's uh, design script syntax works. Um, so I, this is how I learned to use design script. I just did a lot of node to code out of curiosity saying, I wonder what this is in design script. And you'll see that same logic of syntax. So what you're doing, the method and the input and the output obviously comes through the arrow. And we'll just finish up on lists. So be mindful depending which version of Dynamo you're in. Um, it used to be these sorts of brackets, um, the, the, the curly brackets with the, um, the bit on the end. I don't know the name for them. Um, and it actually tells you, it's friendly enough to say, we no longer use these, these curly braces, I guess is what they call them. We use square brackets instead. So you'll see that one, two, three in square brackets implies a list of one, two, three. But you can also define lists using multiple inputs and then a syntax that calls on variables in a code block. So you can see I'm saying string one is ST1, string two, ST2, ST3. And it gives me them as outputs if I so want them but it also gives me the list output. And you can see that it's called on those values that are implied within here. So that's how you can build lists as well if you need to in design script. Um, you, don't, you can use multiple types of inputs as well. You can have a string within a list of numbers. Um, for anyone that's done Python coding, you'll know that actually Python can't typically do that. So that's quite an interesting function. Um, if you're working with arrays in Python, you can't mix data types. Whereas in here, you can actually mix data types, which is quite interesting. The final thing we'll look at is functions. So if you're in a code block and you type out def or define and then put a space, uh, basically what you can put next is a name for a function that you want to define and basically the input syntax of what it should contain. Um, you then put a, a curly brace explanation text can go on the line. So whatever you type here doesn't matter. And you can put formula lines in there. You can put a big complex function that goes through multiple steps. And all you really care about is your return so what are you returning out by the function? And we're gonna say that it's squared is our function and it's input times input. And then you close it with the curly brace um, on the last line. So essentially what I can do is now call on my custom function. Um, this, this, this function isn't actually available in design script. What I've done is defined this. And you can see the great thing about this is that I can just take my function, put it anywhere in my scripting environment right at the start. And later on in my script, I can just call on that function instead of having to worry about feeding everything through every time I want to do it. Cause maybe I want to use this function more than once. Maybe in my script, I actually want to, I want to square and then I want to square again to get uh, a double square. So you can see there, I haven't had to use two sets of nodes that are repeating themselves. Instead, I just define my function elsewhere. So just be mindful of functions cause they can be really helpful in saving coding space, but also reducing the need to bring really long wires a long way further into a script. Um, which is a really common issue on very long scripts that use a lot of functions and a lot of inputs from right at the start of the script later on. So good to be mindful of. 
Um, but otherwise, that's where I'm going to leave it today because I think, um, you know, we can go deeper with code blocks and design scripts, but I don't want to lose you all. Um, to be honest, my, my knowledge of design script doesn't go that much further than that. Um, I still work mostly with nodes and currently learning Python. So it's up to you whether you want to learn more. If you do, uh, the Dynamo Primer is probably the best resource. They have quite a thorough section on design scripting where they show some geometric examples. But as you know, I'm keeping to data as my example, so I'm avoiding geometry. And you can also go to the Dynamo forums if you have specific questions about problems you run into, uh, but keep them keep them thoughtful and try to, try to uh, understand that people are there in their spare time. Um, our next lesson we're going to be looking at is working with Revit data. Uh, where we'll look at sourcing parameters out of Revit elements itself to actually put Dynamo in context of what you actually want to do with it, which is work with Revit. Um, so I'll see you in the next lesson. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. If you enjoy what you're seeing, uh, feel free to follow and subscribe. I'm, I'm sure by this lesson you probably already have if you wanted to. Um, and feel free to let people know about the series as well if they want to learn. Thanks. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.